If you were headed on a cruise from the East Coast, then the chances are high that you'll stop in Nassau. It's one of the busiest cruise destinations on the planet with literally millions of passengers visiting each year. Having visited on quite a few cruises, I've gotten a pretty good feel for Nassau and what to expect. So what do I wish that I knew if I was a first time visitor? I'll let you know right now. The very first thing that you're going to notice when you visit Nassau is that you will not be alone. If you're thinking of a quiet day in port, then think again. The port, it can handle up to six cruise ships a day and recently set a record when nearly 30,000 passengers visited in a single day. More than 4 million cruisers visited for all of 2023. That is more than the population of Los Angeles proper visiting a tiny island over the course of a year. So what does that mean for you? Well, you can expect that the port area is going to be busy. There will be people and traffic and noise in the port area, especially late in the morning and in the early afternoon when most people are out and about. Also, right across from the ships gets busy where there are a number of touristy shops and restaurants. After visiting Nassau quite a few times, one thing is pretty clear. If you were going to do a shore excursion during your cruise, this is the port to do it in. Now, there are some things that you can do on your own, and I will get into those in a moment. This includes putting together your own walking tour or hitting the beach. But to be honest, there isn't a ton that's a must-see right near the cruise port. Meanwhile, the area can be busy and hectic. So if you're headed on a cruise to the Bahamas and you want some sun and beach and water and to get out of the crowds, and frankly, who doesn't, then the easiest way to get that is with a shore excursion. These trips, they can get you out of the city and to the shore. It's also a great way to sightsee some of the sites around town if that's what you're into. You certainly don't have to do an excursion, but it's what I'd suggest to most people. If you get on the message boards or on Facebook and ask about Nassau, one thing that you're likely to hear are issues with crime. Realistically, each day literally tens of thousands of passengers visit without any sort of incident at all. Crime, however, it does happen. The State Department has even recently issued alerts about it. Still, stories on the internet, they can often sound so scary that you may not want to get off the ship. Remember, your time will be spent in port during the day and most often in heavily crowded tourist areas. I recently went walking alone exploring Nassau by myself. It's purely anecdotal, but overall I felt no sense of danger. I will say that it certainly didn't feel like walking around Disney World. One person at the beach asked if I wanted to buy drugs. Uh, no, I'm good. And at one point, I stepped off a curb to cross the street and nearly into a moving car coming from the opposite direction because in the Bahamas, they drive on the left side of the road instead of the right. And during a visit years ago to Cabbage Beach, I did witness a young female come back from a jet ski ride and accuse a man who drove her friend on another jet ski of sexual assault. Police were later involved, it was a whole thing. The bottom line, it's definitely not a private island run by the cruise lines, but I also don't think that you have to be scared to get off of the ship. If you haven't visited Nassau in a while or you've never been before, just know that it's not like it used to be. The port has undergone a major renovation to make it more similar to what you find in many other areas of the Caribbean. There is now a brand new welcome area where you'll find everything from spots to meet shore excursions, to the taxi stand, to tons of little storefronts selling everything from drinks to food to souvenirs. If you don't want to go far from the ship, it's worth it just to go and check it out and stretch your legs, but don't expect it to be a complete destination in of itself. Some of the other major ports have areas that you could theoretically spend the entire day in without going outside of the gates. Nassau, it isn't like that, but the new area is much nicer than what it was like before. Head to the Bahamas and yeah, the beach is going to be on your mind. Unfortunately, the best beaches aren't close to the cruise ships and require a taxi or a ferry or a shore excursion to get to. If you don't want convenience, however, then the closest beach, Junkanoo Beach, is about a 10 to 15 minute walk. To get there, you'll take a right out of the port area and then just walk along the street, essentially hugging the shore. You'll walk around a couple of major hotel resorts, and when you pass the Margaritaville Resort, 
you were there. I think of Junkanoo Beach as really two different beaches. At the start of it, it's fairly busy with a lot of chairs and umbrellas for rent. There are beach bars and spots to get something to eat. But if you just walk a little bit farther, it's much quieter and there are even some trees to offer a little bit of shade. Now, it's not exactly postcard worthy, but it is decent and an easy walk from the ship. And it's also free to enjoy. Speaking of walking, I mentioned that there isn't a lot that's must see right near the port. But if you want to go explore on your own, there is a bit that's within walking distance. Now, first things first, there's been a lot of talk about safety in Nassau. The State Department, as I said, issued a recent warning due to violence. All I can tell you is that I walked by myself everywhere recently and I never felt uneasy. Within a few minutes walk of the ship is Junkanoo Beach, which I mentioned earlier, the National Art Gallery, the Queen's Staircase that I highly recommend you see, even though it is pretty quick to experience. And then there's the Bahamas Historical Society Museum and Parliament Square, which is the seat of the Bahamian government. And right across from the cruise port is Bay Street with a ton of restaurants, shops, and stores all designed really for tourists. If you are going to walk around, then one thing you'll learn real quick is that the infrastructure is not like back home. If you're someone that's able-bodied and younger, then you won't have any trouble getting around. You'll just want to be aware of where you're stepping as sometimes walkways can be narrow or rocky or really non-existent and you have to walk alongside parked cars near traffic. They also drive on the left hand side in the Bahamas, as I said, so be aware when you're like me and you step off of the sidewalk to cross the street and you nearly get clipped because you were looking the wrong way. Now, if you're someone that's older or has mobility issues, then you'll want to know that sidewalks can range from pretty poor to non-existent outside of the immediate port area. I'd recommend those who don't get around so well or have a good sense of balance to find a different way to explore the city. Let's talk about the 800 pound gorilla in the room or the port to be more accurate. When you arrive in port, you'll see Nassau in one direction and Paradise Island on the other side of the channel. Now, Paradise Island is anchored by the massive Atlantis resort that towers over seemingly everything. This is a resort that frankly would be at home in Las Vegas. It features the hotel, a casino, shops, a marina, a complete water park, and it sits right on the beach. It also carries a high-end price tag. Admission to the water park is well into the hundreds of dollars and only available to guests or those paying for a day pass. But there are some areas that cruise passengers can visit for free, like the shops and the casino. So if you want something to do that's easy, heading here and just taking it all in is actually pretty popular and you'll find plenty of other passengers doing the exact same. So how do you get to Paradise Island? There are a couple of ways. First, there's a taxi stand in the port area. A taxi will take you across the bridge and over to the island. But honestly, the more memorable way is to catch the ferry. In the port area, there is a ferry that heads over to Paradise Island for seven bucks per person each way. You pay your fee and you get to ride on this open air ferry that's honestly pretty rustic. Along the way, the locals will give you a speech pointing out some of the fancy houses and facts about Atlantis and ask for a tip at the end. Sure, it is a bit of a tourist trap, but it's also something that you frankly can't get back home. One other reason to head over to Paradise Island, if you want the nicest beach that's accessible from the cruise port, you will find it here. Cabbage Beach may not sound like the most attractive name for a beach, but this spot is really nice. On one end sits Atlantis, and then the beach stretches for roughly a mile and a half. There's golden sand, there's blue water, and most days there will be lots of people as well. This is a popular spot, so you won't be alone. As well, there are vendors selling everything from drinks to umbrellas and chair rentals. To get there, you'll want to take a taxi or you can take the ferry and then walk over, but it is a bit of a trek. I do have some directions on cruisely.com that I'll put in the description below. One more thing, if you're worried about crowds, all you have to do, plug down a little bit and you'll find plenty of space to spread out. Thanks for watching and I hope that you learned something about visiting Nassau on a cruise, but I wanna know what you wish that you knew before visiting if you've gone before. Leave your comments below. As well, you can find more about cruising everywhere, including Nassau at cruisely.com. Until next time, happy sailing.